Hello all. I'm going to be unboxing Ghost Panzer, which is part of the Band of Brothers series. This is the remastered edition. The original version, uh, I believe, came in a box similar to this. Screaming Eagles, Band of Brothers. This is the original version. This follows the U.S. versus the Germans uh, from D-Day to the Battle of the Bulge uh, and scenarios involving the 101st Airborne. And it came in a you know box like this. This remastered version, I believe, has uh, not only um, has changed some of the mechanics a little bit, uh, I think, to streamline it even more, even though this is a relatively quick, fast playing, small unit tactical game. Um, I'll refer you to, if, if you're watching this on YouTube, I've got a link to an article on the evolution of small unit tactical war games. Uh, and this is one of the one of the at the squad level is one of the better offerings. This is a, a quick to play, um, very intuitive, and once you kind of get through the rules, which aren't that uh, complex, uh, you can get this on the board and and, and get after it. Um, also, I think they have like mountain maps. They went from like uh, thinner um, geomorphic maps in the original Screaming Eagles and and Ghost Panzer to uh, mountain maps. So let's take a look at the back of the box here. This is a Band of Brothers Ghost Panzer. It is the second in a series of fast-playing games of squad-level combat in World War II. It is a standalone game that follows the critical success of Band of Brothers Screaming Eagles. Ghost Panzer, named for the symbol used by the German 11th Panzer, follows the division from their invasion of Russia in 1941 up to their withdrawal from the, to the Western Front in 1944. All of their major battles are represented, including the Bloody Triangle, the largest ba tank battle until Krusk, Operation Typhoon, and the drive on Moscow. They came within 12 miles of the capital. Case Blue, the relief attempt of Stalingrad, the backhand blow, the southern pincer at Kursk, and the Corson Pocket. So, East Front tactical, at, at a squad tactical level, in a box. So let's see what we have in this box here. Ooh, squeaky. Oops. Man, that is on there tight. No skimping on the plastic on this one. Here we go good thick box again that's a lot thicker than the original uh again i don't have the original ghost panzer i have the original band of brothers and if you look at the box here you know, this is not as thick or sturdy this is a good size sturdy box uh, you're going to get uh, out of the right off the top is your scenarios you've got an infantry uh, training scenario and if you're familiar with you know, Panzer Leader, which is one of the earlier ones to do this, or Panzer Blitz. Uh, Panzer Leader was the first one I bought, but Panzer Blitz did this. Squad Leader, Advanced Squad Leader. You know, you'll have your orientation of where the maps, how the geomorphic maps fit together. You have your turn track, and then you're going to have the units that are involved in the scenario with a little bit of write-up and what the objectives are for the scenario. So full color. Here's all the different scenarios. Very nice. And there's scenario 32, course in pocket. Okay. Sorry for the glare there. So you can see that a little bit better. Then you've got the rules. Uh, Band of Brothers. This is like the series rules. This is Band of Brothers rules 2.1. And they are 20 pages, although... There's a lot of examples of play, and here's like a glossary at the back here it with, uh, I believe also has like rules reference, so you have like a op fire and then, then a rules reference where it's at. Full color uh, combat event table, so there's a lot of examples in here and explanation. Uh, you also have in red, you have examples in red as well, so you have color examples, uh, Noted examples. So, as I said, the game is not that uh, complex. It's uh, under the mold of uh, find them, fix them, and uh, finish them, 
where you don't have a combat result table where you're trying to get a unit eliminated. You're just trying to beat the unit down. You're trying to suppress them uh, and then keep them in place so that you can get other units in that can kind of finish them off, maybe like in more of an assault uh, type fashion. So you have your, you know, your facing of the counter there. Bring this a little bit closer here. So you have your facing. Uh, so the, the counters have, like the vehicles do have a facing. You have uh, guns uh, versus vehicle slash infantry. So the numbers like seven and five or versus uh, vehicle then versus an infantry. This is a like an anti-tank gun here, I believe. Then you have your casualty rating, unit type, proficiency, which is one of the things I think they changed somewhat. I think they changed those ratings from um, or that system a little bit from the original to the uh, to Ghost Panzer and, and beyond. Uh, there's a, an expansion that expands both Ghost Panzer and Screaming Eagles. It's called Texas Arrows. So that's your vehicle. So you got a little bit of explanation of the counters there. And then you have the infantry counters here, as you can see. So you have your firepower, uh, your melee firepower, your range, uh, your casualty rating, and that's a number that's going to depend on uh, how much damage they take and whether you you know, affect their morale and get a, a, a damage marker or uh, whether it's a full out uh, destroy the unit. Uh, and then your morale, which is very key in this game because uh, your morale, you need to roll morale checks to, to basically do anything in the game. So there's the rules. As I said, this isn't overly complex. Then you have a player aid chart that has your train effects, has your situations, has notes. And then your different, uh, some modifiers uh, and key charts there. And there's two of those, so one for each side. Uh, then you have your counters, Ooh, and they're wrapped. And then this is an interesting thing here. You get a little counter tray. This is a little different looking counter tray that I've seen before. And it fits relatively snugly in there. But you get a little counter tray with two tin-sided dice. We'll see how that well that goes over. And then you have your maps and counters in here. You can find the, uh, the tab that pulls them out. It's taking me forever here. And there it is. Quite a bit in here. Uh, well, and again, this is, uh, let's start with the maps here first and the maps are different than in uh band of brothers uh screaming eagles which were thinner geomorphic maps this one as you can tell are relatively th good thickness there um good thick maps geomorphic so they can all fit together at different uh angles so you have one two three four five six and seven, so seven maps there, seven map boards, and they're double-sided, so 14 different maps there, geomorphic. Then you have your counters, and again, there are, are of good thickness as well. They're not thin counters there. Let's flip this over. So you have foxholes. I mean, again, this is a tactical game at a squad level. So vehicles are going to be vehicles, and then you're going to have squads, of, which is a group of units. Here's the Russians. Here's some Germans. More Russians. So you can see the little squad symbol on there, and then there's the Russian star in the background, and then some of their tanks up here. Then the German units get quite a few counters here. Which is what you expect in a tactical game. Then you have some markers here. Move, uh, op fire, fully suppressed. Again, this game is about suppressing and then going in and finishing them. Smoke designations, sustained fire and the like. So you have some markers here. So that is what you get in the box. I hope the hope this was helpful. Uh, if you're interested in this, this is what you get. I might do something a little bit more in depth on the gameplay. As I said, this is one of the uh, one of the top uh, small unit tactical games 
uh, at the squad level that is out there, at least in my opinion. Uh, and I said, check out that list. Uh, it's on, um, if you're watching this on YouTube, it's on the YouTube site. Um, and it, sh it goes through the history of small unit tactical games. And again, this is this is on it. But I list some at the beginning of, like the, probably the top 12 of platoon level, top 12 of squad, squad level, and then top 12 of a, at individual level. So anyway, hope this was helpful. If you like it, please like the video, uh, subscribe, uh, give me comments, let me know what else you'd like to see. I have lots of games, be more than happy to pull some off the shelf and do a deeper dive into them. So uh, hope you found this helpful. Enjoy. Thanks.